In a few of my CB radio stories on the channel, we've concentrated on individuals and their brushes with the law in both the UK and the United States. However, CB radio breakers weren't the only people being busted, as many CB dealers found out during the early 1980s. During 1981, there were numerous reports of CB radio shops having unwelcome visits from the authorities, and in this instalment I'll be telling you the story of Roger D from Chiswick in London. Situated in a busy side street in Chiswick, Roger opened the shop's doors at the beginning of August 1981. The shop stocked a large range of CB radio accessories, as well as books and a nice line in CB Christmas cards, and was run by Ian Brown for Roger Wright, the owner. Very soon after opening, Ian was getting fed up with customers asking if he stocked rigs. Back then, it was illegal for shops to sell radios, and they sold every conceivable CB radio accessory out there, except for the rigs themselves. Because of public demand, Ian started to keep a few popular rigs in very small quantities. However small the quantities, it was unfortunately enough to attract the attention of the local police, since they kept an eye on the shop. On the 17th of August 1981, amongst his other customers, Ian had what appeared to be a courting couple, for want of a less antiquated phrase, who visited the shop and looked round the stock on display. They asked if there was any rigs available and Ian showed them the microphone section of a one-hander. At 5.45pm the same day, two men entered the shop, identified themselves as customs and excise officers and asked Ian if there were any rigs on the premises. Ian immediately said no, but they, of course, searched the premises anyway, even taking up loose floorboards. They fairly quickly found four sets under the counter in the shop and a one-hander in Ian's briefcase. To Ian's surprise, the courting couple came back and identified themselves as plainclothes officers from the crime squad. They helped the customs officers search the whole property. Ian was also questioned about his car, and another set, bringing the total to six, was found in the car. Ian had to shut up the shop and drove his car down to the local police station, accompanied by a customs officer. All the details of the rigs were taken, and everyone then proceeded to Ian's home to search there. Nothing was found, so Ian went back to the police station where he was further questioned and given an official notice of seizure. The GPO were called to verify that the sets were indeed CB, and Ian was released on unconditional bail to reappear the following Wednesday at the station. When Ian went back to the station, he was charged with two offences against Section 170 of the Customs and Excise Management Act 1979. That is, intent to evade the prohibition or importation imposed by the Radio Telephonic Transmitters Control of Manufacture Order 1968, made under the Wireless Telegraphy Act of 1967, and was concerned in keeping certain goods. He was then fingerprinted and photographed, and went home to await the summons. Ian appeared at Acton Magistrates Court on the 28th of September 1981, remarkably quick compared to other cases. He'd obtained a good solicitor and had been granted legal aid, but felt it best to plead guilty as the circumstances were unarguable. The prosecution by a customs official who explained about the illegal importation of CB equipment and the claimed interference caused by AMCB. One of the police officers concerned also made a statement about the events of the 17th of August. In return, Ian's defence emphasised Ian's unfamiliarity with the law and personal aspects of the case. The magistrate, while not very familiar with CB, was obviously worried about the interference and asked Ian if he was aware of this side effect as he called it. Since Ian had pleaded guilty, the magistrate fined him £25 for the set in the car and £75 for the five found in the shop. The prosecution weren't awarded costs and Ian was given time to pay the fine. Compared to many other cases we've looked at on the channel, this was quite lenient. Did the individual magistrate not consider the offence too serious, or maybe generally there was less pressure and interest in illegal CB? Whatever the reason, Ian and Roger learnt their lesson. Yeah, well, once you do search, you can come as much as you like. I mean, that's a bit out of order there, because that makes me want to jump in my wheels and drive straight on over. Well, they're not very good, buddy. Yeah, well, Steve, Roger. 